welcome back to Weeby Kids. I'm Annie and in this session we are going to be looking at how to take some winter twig IDing and turning it into a beautiful weaving for your home. To make your winter twig weaving you are going to need some twigs and sticks of different thicknesses and lengths and textures. You're also going to need some twine and yarn, scissors, some masking tape, secateurs and an embroidery thread needle or you can just use the masking tape for this. And if you have one you may find a ruler coming in handy. Once your twigs are home, leave them somewhere nice and warm to dry overnight. You're going to need some that are thicker and some that are thinner. Begin by sorting out your sticks. You're going to need four of roughly the same length. So have a good look through your pile and work out what it is you're going to be using to make your beautiful wooden loom structure and which ones you're going to be using for twig ID. My loom is going to be around 20 centimetres long and my twigs are going to fit inside that loom. So now you've selected your sticks, place them out. Then you're going to need to cut yourself all lengths of twine and then you're going to need to secure on four points around your loom structure. I've used a clove hitch here as it seemed the most sensible use of knot. Don't worry if yours doesn't use a clove hitch, simply do something that's best for you. I've then followed that up with something that's called square lashing. As you can see, once your knot's in place, you separate your two strands and you take one of them behind, pull it round to the front and over, push it down and round that back stick again, coming up on the other side of the stick and keep looping it round. And it creates this lovely clean pattern on the back of the stick. After wrapping round a few times you're going to take the other strand and you're going to turn your structure on the side so you can see it wrapping round three times in between and then you'll be able to see how that tightens the structure up then tie it all together with an overhand knot. Now this outer loom structure is something that you can do in preparation for your child if they're younger or perhaps it's something that they would like to have a go at themselves. And don't worry if yours doesn't use a clove hitch or square lashing, simply do something that's best for you. With your structure now complete on all four points, you're going to need to attach a long string. Be sure that whichever yarn you do use, that it's not too thin or liable to snap. This is the main strength that's going to hold all of your weaving and sticks in place. Tie your end on to one of your sides securely and you're going to be wrapping it down to the other end. Now this first strand is often the one that will remain quite loose despite you frequently trying to tighten it. So don't worry too much about this, you can always twist it a little bit tighter at the end. Now pull that strand down to the other side, you're going to wrap it behind and bring it forwards and then you're going to wrap it behind again but on the other side of where you've pulled your string down and pull that tight so you've effectively crossed over then you're going to go through to the back again and pull it all the way up to the top again well you're going to have to repeat the same process so you wrap it round and back and round and back so that you're wrapping either side of each of those loom strands so that's what's creating your beautiful warp Doing this ensures that your strands are less likely to move around on your stick or twig and this is quite an important thing to consider because when they are moving around they may loosen because there'll be different lengths between the sticks and from the top to the bottom all the way along because nature doesn't usually provide us with perfectly straight sticks when we gather them from the ground. Make sure each of those strands is as tight as you are able to make it as you are working. When creating your loom, it's also important to remember that you need to have an odd number of strands at the end in order for a weaving to work because the pattern runs over, under, over, under, over, under. So with the loom structure complete and you having wrapped your warp all the way round and round and round that structure, you come to the end and you are simply going to have to tie off your end. Simply tie the knot and cut the excess off. Now you are ready to look at the next stages. First of all, consider which way round you would like to have your frame. What is top, what is bottom? Next, go back to those trusty sticks that you've been collecting. It's time to do some winter twig ID. Look for those that are interesting, perhaps different colours, different shapes, and those that may have different features on them that you can identify. I used a twig ID sheet from the Woodland Trust, but there are many different options for you out there, as well as many books. With your smaller sticks and twigs prepared, if you need to cut any down, you can. It's time to weave them into your beautiful loom structure. So remember, in order to weave, you need to weave in 
and out. So one over, one under, one thread over, one thread under. And you complete this until you have all of your differing sticks and twigs exactly where you would like to have them. And onwards we go. Next, we're gonna to come to the weaving part. Now, if you have got your yarn ready, you can either have a needle that you can use for threading through, or you can use this handy nifty little method. Take your yarn, grab a piece of masking tape or sticky tape, and attach that to the end of your twine or your yarn, and then just wrap it round nice and tightly, twist on the ends and snip. This creates an end to your yarn that is a bit stiffer and allows you to work in and out of those beautiful warp threads on the loom. So you have to remember that pattern again. One under, one over, one under, one over, one under, one over. Pull your yarn through until you only have a little bit left at the end and simply keep going round. Do a few lines where you are going over and under and over and under and over and under and then push them back up towards the end stick so that they are nice and tightly pushed together. Our yarn has run out. Fear not, it's actually quite a simple thing to remedy. When you come to the end of your yarn and you have a little bit of excess left at the end, make sure that you do that. You then need to see the strand into which it has wrapped itself under or over. As you'll see here, I've always left them under. It means you then just take your next prepared thread or piece of yarn and you are gonna thread it in the same place where it is ended. So you are threading it underneath again. Literally make sure you leave a little bit of an end, both on the one that finished and the tip of the one you are starting. Keep hold of those ends so that it doesn't pull through and then simply continue your weaving over and under and over and under in exactly the same pattern as you were doing before. Obstacle number two, you've come to your first stick. Simply come to the end of your row and as you were about to start a new row, you're simply gonna pull that twig into its place nice and tightly so that your weaving remains nice and tight and then start weaving on the opposite side of it. Now your first length of weaving may be exactly as the same as the actual stick has gone through. Again, don't worry about that, that's perfectly normal. Just keep on weaving with that beautiful over and under all the way along and continue. And don't worry if you make mistakes. Maybe you go over two or under two or you miss one. It's not gonna make a massive big problem for part of your weaving. Try not to have any worries about that. It may even add to the beauty of it in the end. Just keep going and complete this with each and every one of your beautiful twigs that you have woven in and out of your warp threads for you to ID. If you wanna change your yarn at any point or change your color, you can do so. I've done it here by just starting to begin to use a slightly thicker twine. I just wondered what the different texture might be. You can always use whatever you would like to use and you simply join on in exactly the same way as you would as if you came to the end of one of your threads. You start in exactly the same way. You're gonna take your end through wherever it is you end. If it's wanting to start a whole new line, take the end of your old color around Weave in a couple of pieces of the warp thread and then start with your new one from the end in exactly the same way as you have done all the way through. And that takes us to a last obstacle that we can think of. Perhaps one of your sticks wants to be at an angle and that's how you want to weave it in. Well, again, it's actually a very, very simple technique. You're gonna weave your way along just as you always would but you're only gonna weave up to the point where your stick meets your thread coming along. So that might mean that you don't make it all the way to the other end on the other side of your piece of work. So you may only have to go two threads less to the end and then do a couple of rows and then maybe there'll be four threads less to the end and then three and two and one until you are literally only doing a couple of rows using a couple of your loom threads when you reach the end in exactly the same way you just pull your stick nice and tightly at the angle you've now chosen to do it at and then you'll take your thread around to the other side and begin weaving again now the simplest way to deal with this is simply to run your weaving in and out next to the stick starting to weave at an angle and 
then slowly work your way back and up and as slowly as you fill it in you'll again find that you don't need to go quite as far along maybe again two less then three and four and five and six working your way back along so that you don't need to use as much of the loom in order to fill the structure until eventually you've filled your triangular shape so there's a flat edge and then you simply are going to be weaving along as you were before and amazingly you are now finding yourself very close to finishing so how do we finish off our weaving well you have to do your last row pull that last row a little bit away so you have a gap between that and the row previous to it and simply weave in and out and in and out and in and out a couple of times back inside of the weaving and then you have to push the weaving back up together nice and tightly so that it's not going to come loose and then you can simply snip away the excess yarn and that's it there you have a very beautiful weaving and in there you can also ID your beautiful winter twigs and have spent some creative family time together. Now doing a project like this may take time. It's something you can do over a week, especially if you're with younger ones and they don't have the attention span. Or maybe it's a project you can do as a whole family. Also remember, I've made mine quite small here. You can make these structures as large as you would like and you can also change the different types of thread and yarn that you use. Thicker obviously makes it faster, thinner might make it take longer. Hope you have lots of fun and I hope you enjoyed this project. Take care, see you soon, bye from Weeby Kids.